Okay, this is the exact diagram of how I have my solar panel system wired. You may want to wire yours differently, but I'll go through how I wired it and why I wired it the way that I did. And then just apply whatever information or knowledge you can get from this to how you want to set up your system. What I have here starting with is four 12 volt, 220 watt panels. And I have them wired in a 24 volt system. The reason why I wanted to have a 24 volt system is because it allows me to use smaller wiring which reduces my cost. The way that I go from a 12 volt to a 24 volt system is by connecting the negative of one panel to the positive of another panel. So these effectively now become one panel and again I have the positive here which is left over from connecting these two and the negative which is left over from connecting these two and I run those two positive and neg negative cables over here into my charge controller. Between the solar panel and the charge controller I have a 30 amp fuse. I spent just a few dollars on an inline fuse, a good quality one, because those few dollars may save me the $185 or whatever it was I spent on this charge controller. Very small investment, very big return on that investment. I'll have links to all of these items below this video. Once the wiring comes into the charge controller, the charge controller wiring comes out and just goes into my first battery. And then I have these batteries set up in 24 volt banks. I have three banks of batteries. Each of these batteries is six volts. So six, 12, 18, 24. That's one 24 volt bank. Here's a second and here's the third. I could also just have this going into two 12 volt batteries. From the batteries, I simply have the positive coming through a 150 amp or 200 amp fuse and the negative coming into the my 24 volt inverter. From the 24 volt inverter I simply plug in the appliances that I want to run or I run an extension cord, plug things into there or I run this to my circuit breaker box in my garage so I can run my entire house. When you look at this you've probably realized that I really have a completely redundant system. These two panels here are connected as one panel and they connect to this charge controller which comes to the battery bank which comes to the inverter. I can really take these set of panels and this charge controller take a bank of these batteries and then my other inverter and run in a completely separate unit which is what I have. One is none, two is one. Now that's one reason why I bought these charge controllers is because they're less expensive so I can have redundancy in my system. I could have spent about the same amount of money in buying one charge controller but then I don't have a spare. In addition to the solar panels and the charge controllers charging the batteries I also have these two items over here on the side. This is a battery tender. The reason why I have the battery tender wired into the batteries is because 99% of the time I don't have the solar panels charging the batteries and I want to keep these batteries charged up. That's where the battery tender comes in. This is a 24 volt battery tender. I have a specific video on this so please look at that information and click the link below that video for customer reviews on the battery tender. This battery tender is plugged in to my regular AC power in the house and it maintains my batteries at full charge floats them so they don't overcharge and keeps them from getting discharged. What I have over here is a desulfator. This desulfator will triple the life of these batteries. These batteries have an average 10 year lifespan so for a couple hundred dollars I'm able to extend these batteries which cost me thousands of dollars to not 10 years, not 20 years, but 30 years a very good investment to protect my batteries and extend my battery life. This wiring here from the solar panels to the charge controller to the battery is not complicated. As you can see all the red, all the positive goes to battery number one. What does get complicated is where the negative goes because that goes to battery number 12. I'll talk about that in another video. Please watch my 
how to wire your battery bank video for complete details and explanations of why I have it wired the way that I do. But just to summarize, all the positive goes to battery number one, all the negatives go in this case to battery number 12. You could do this entire system with just one panel. In that case, you just have one panel. You'd have the positive red coming over, coming into the same 30 amp fuse, and you would have a 12 volt controller coming into, for example, two six volt golf car batteries or one 12 volt deep cycle battery. And then from there, you would come over to your inverter. This is the maximum size I can get with these controllers. I can't get any larger because, because these controllers max out at 500 watts. So right now I'm pushing 440 watts through, through these into each controller. If I wanted to add more panels, I would simply buy an, an additional controller and run the wiring the same way I run these. I hope this has been helpful. Feel free to write any questions, comments, experiences you've had, how you've wired your system. Do a video re a response so other people can see how you've wired your system. This can be be very intimidating and confusing initially, but once you lay it out on paper and understand where the positive and the negative wires go, it's not difficult. Now please watch my wire video on how to determine what size wire uh, thickness that you need and watch my video on how to wire your battery bank if you have multiple batteries. This is LDS Prepper reminding you, if you are prepared, you shall not fear.